Let's get to the debunk. Joining us to do it is the debunk a fire himself, author of Give Them an Argument, Logic for the Left. He has a great Patreon page. Become a patron of it. He teaches logic, logic, perimeter college in Atlanta. Ben Burgess. Ben, you ready? For, uh, first of all, say hi to Brandon. Brandon, say hi to Ben. Hi, hi Brandon. Ben. Ready? For, uh, you guys are going to meet soon. You guys are going to both be at the uh, Bell House show. We've met. Well, we have met, but yeah. Wait, where did you? Were you guys in studio together here? Uh, no, we met at uh, the oh fundraising event at the Lauren Ashcroft yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. I think Ben was also at this event I went to on Thursday, but he didn't recognize me. No, Ben wouldn't be because Ben was in Atlanta, unless your oh. event was in Atlanta. No, definitely wasn't. So, <laughs> all right. Well, you didn't recognize Ben. That is oh. that, that. It does seem to be the <laughs> <laughs> seem to be the case. Oh, all right, uh, Ben, you ready for your song? Absolutely. All right, let's go. I want to go to mockery really bad. I that, will. So please go. Okay. You got to restrain. That's one of the best parts. Logic. Logic. My favorite part shifts each week. You're going to show us how to argue. This is based on data from a bunch of different countries. There's abundant evidence that uh, at this point uh, that that's bullshit. That's such a down these right-wing arguments and looking at how they're supposed to fit together. Okay, break it down. 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 Ben, what just absolute garbage nonsense do we need to take care of this week? Uh, well, this is the New York Times. It's interview with Bernie Sanders, uh, which is good because uh, this is at least um, this transcript of the exact words that are said. Because sometimes you hear things about things that he said in conversation, like uh, apparently they're uh, – in a private conversation with Elizabeth Warren, he said he's not a fan of TMBS, and he specifically <laughs> he specifically discourages people from going to the Brooklyn Live Show. So that was just I didn't the like one that. one thing that we could find that could get me to unendorse. <laughs> the literal only thing. I heard yeah. him say that the show was a lot stronger before they leaned into the debug segments. <laughs> More right wing yeah. Mandela. <laughs> Bernie has an enthusiastic podcast. <laughs> Go on, Chapo. <laughs> oh, my God. Ed is going to be on tonight. Best of all worlds. Boom. Fire emoji. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's right. Uh, <laughs> that was actually uh, in the part of the New York Times interview that was cut. It was right after I don't have terribly much tolerance for bullshit. He started talking about his favorite podcast. <laughs> Just that we're like, they're like, are you finally going to admit that you are wrong about a comment that you made about an opposition politician in Venezuela or in Guatemala in 2015 that I've been tweeting at you about for five years? I've been told that Bernie gets all of his racial politics from my podcast. The, <laughs> oh, wow. the discourse yeah. is underrated. Underrated. And un I think it's overrated, un overrated and underpaid. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So um, the New York Times ended up uh, shocking everybody by not endorsing Bernie. Um, I you know, was pretty sure up until the last minute that that's what they were going to do. Uh, given um, and especially if you looked at what a friendly conversation it was right. uh, uh, from the transcript, uh, you know, would have been surprising. And so in particular, I'm interested in this part sort of midway through the transcript of their interview with him. We have this, guys. Be ready. OK. So where Nick Fox says, can I just follow up on that one question? And so this is after Bernie has been talking about. Uh, the political revolution strategy and holding rallies in Kentucky um, to uh, to you know whip up public support uh, for social democratic policies to be opposed by Mitch McConnell, and so Nick Fox says, given what we've been through over the last three years, when Democrats hear about the president flying around the country holding rallies, they might cringe. Oh, I just cringed. And I'm wondering how you flying around the country in 2021 rallying the people would be different than what Donald Trump has been doing. That's a great point. The whole thing made my butthole pucker. Is that what, <laughs> is that what cringing is? <laughs> Jesus. Like, like just annoyed. <laughs> An annoyed pucker. Oh, so, Ben, uh, you, you know, you 
sometimes we take on overrated idiots like Ben Shapiro, but this is the New York Times. Very smart people. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is this is the gray lady. This is the definition of seriousness in media is the New York Times, <laughs> uh, which is clearly a reputation they're keen to preserve, which is why they did that uh, special episode of The Apprentice style rollout for the endorsement. <laughs> And then when they did the endorsement, they endorsed two people. <laughs> I mean, Which, by the way, you should – I think as, as David Slavic pointed out on, on Twitter though, I mean by all means, if you're feeling the endorsement, write in both candidates. Check both boxes. <laughs> That's right. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. <laughs> Fuse their names together. <laughs> yeah. Few, yeah. Eh? Right. <laughs> It'll count as a double vote if you go Clo Warren. Yeah. Amen no, War- no, totally, right? <laughs> Amen Warwichar. Vo- write it in, folks. Sounds like an Eastern European drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that sounds like something far more cool than either Amy Klobuchar or Elizabeth Warren or the New York Times. All right. Can, I guess we got to do this because this is the way these – I mean, actually, just in seriousness, this yeah. particular mind-blowing frame, which I, I don't know, it would almost be like analogous to like, you know – President Kennedy, you've suggested that people should go abroad and join the Peace Corps. Is this the same? Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of Americans are concerned about like Mao talking about permanent world revolution. Does this not <laughs> remind you of the same thing? I mean, as ludicrous and as asinine as the comparison is, I mean, this is something you hear trotted out a lot. Um, and all sorts of stupid, offensive, ridiculous and asinine comparisons between Trump and Bernie. So let's debunk it. Yeah, uh, absolutely, and this is and uh, this is reasoning they repeated when uh, when they explained uh, why they weren't endorsing him in the ultimate editorial. They said uh, that he was uh, a that it would be exchanging one divisive over over promiser for another. Oh my right? god! Um, so disgusting. Which honestly, I've got to say, the people who should be most offended by that editorial, by the way, are progressives who like Elizabeth more and more, more than we do because yes. from those people's perspective seeing her equated with Amy Klobuchar told that she's good because she's not divisive like Bernie Sanders is um, you know it's, it's, it's got to be uh, that's got to be a slap in the face but um, but yeah so so this is an analogy anytime you want to evaluate an argument for analogy you say what are the relevant things that these things have in common what are the relevant things that they they don't have in common uh, and so it seems like well uh, Bernie would be holding rallies that lots of people would go to uh, and Trump has been holding rallies that lots of people have gone to. Uh, and so that is something they, they, they have in common, as Bernie points out in the response. One thing they don't have in common is that the things that would be advocated at these rallies would be diametrically opposed to each other. Um, so that that seems like if, if you if you care about the content of what is being said on stage at such a rally, that's maybe part of why you dislike Trump rallies, then that would be something to, to take into consideration. But I this think- is like literally like saying we all saw the dental chair scene in Marathon Man. Shouldn't we <laughs> yes. not let you practice dentistry? I, I've heard, <laughs> I've heard that uh, Michael, you're working on a book. Yes, you it's kn- done. Oh, you have a book. It's you know, published you know in, about, in about a little over a month. You know what else is a book? What? Mein Kampf. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn how, it. How is your yeah, book different than... I just got than... nailed. <laughs> how is your... Yeah. Uh, I'm... Yeah. No, I mean, I'm... I'm I mean, I, that's actually a one-to-one right there. I, I'm the New York Times editorial staff. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. Can you do... I'm re- real quick, real quick, Ben. Ben, real quick. Brandon, can you do the face when you ask me that? Which the, face? The New York Times editorial face. You're just like... Mm. Like... Check me, check me. Yeah, you got to like put your hand on your chin, just like, so you're writing a book. So did uh, Adolf Hitler. You worked for a company that was fixing bread prices. (laughs) (laughs) That, I will will say I'm inclined to believe that they wanted to give it to Pete Buttigieg until he just absolutely. Until he just lost his shit over the bread price question. Which his answer didn't make any sense, but I would contend that they didn't really endorse anybody. It's like Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren are, are, they're not like. Uh, apples and oranges, but there's enough daylight between them to make a comparison, like to make choosing or rather equating them completely asinine. Where it's like, okay, oh, yeah. like what, like what could, wait, what could be 
what could be the lesson here other than that women are interchangeable? Yeah, <laughs> like, well. it's, just like, it's just like, it's like, what, like, what is the lesson here? I mean, this, it's offensive to everybody. It's like, oh, we don't really care which one wins. But I think that speaks to, you know, both uh, this comparison between Trump and Bernie and the comparison between uh, Warren and Klobuchar. It speaks to their disaffection. Which it's like a, for, these people are not able to make basic critical distinctions, even the, though it's like their job well i mean they're operating at, <laughs> they're operating at the like the entirely symbolic level it's like oh right. one woman for another woman uh you have you know you're a populist trump is a populist and you know in the most vaguest completely anti-intellectual <laughs> use of the word like you both have people who support you a lot of people and who have rallies like I, how are you different it's like that's not a that's not a real comparison it's it's a it's a completely vacuous one right i mean i would just yeah so, so that's so that's interesting, right? So I, I think that this, if you're going to try to see what they're getting at here, if this isn't quite as stupid as it seems, and I don't want to rule out the possibility that it is really just that stupid, but uh, but if it isn't, then like that actually tells you something really damning about the New York Times worldview, that uh, that like they literally like that their big objection to Trump is literally that. Uh, because he maybe came out of left field a little bit in terms of the, what the Republican establishment was expecting, and uh, and he won when he wasn't expected to because you know lots of people responded to his message that like that's that's their objection right that that's that that it's like oh this is a guy who represents the like interference of like some like ordinary bumpkins in politics who, who shouldn't, you know, who shouldn't be interfering with it, you know, like that you should, as David Feldman was adding, was eloquently laid out, you know, you should, should let the technocrats handle it. Just well, give David Feldman the entire New York Times editorial board. Well, I mean, from my perspective, just to jump off of what uh, Ben was saying, you know, I think it speaks to just, uh, you know, an, a weird, not a weird, just, uh, unfortunate truth about the centrist that the New York Times op-ed both cater to and are comprised of, is that like they just find pot like you know not populism they just find like democracy not because they use the yes. word populism they they democracy. find the idea of like mass politics like the idea and you know democracy like, people controlling their own lives in a way that is not necessarily geared towards what the New York Times thinks or geared towards what best benefits like the people New York Times represent to be distasteful like I think that they're you know immediately when the the right the far I mean when the myth, like mainstream, I hate using different. When the centrist media started, you know, conquering far right populism to far left populism, people sort of focused on that and said, "Okay, this is just them being reductive and lazy." It's like, no, I think for them, it's the same thing. Right. It's like because yeah. because like when they talk about like uh, Bernie Sanders is too divisive, like that's not a real critique. Like all politics in in some way is divisive because people have different opinions about them. So you can't you can't please everyone at all time. So who is Bernie Sanders dividing? And I think Bernie Sanders and to a lesser degree Donald Trump speak to the real divide that we're seeing as a society that's not necessarily strictly left and right but like there is this core center of the population they lean they may lean a little bit left they may lean a little bit right but they're really defined by their relationship to the status quo uh which is leaves them comfortable versus like everyone else like it could be like versus everyone else and i don't think that the people at the new york times likes that bernie's message and again sometimes trump message speaks to that divide it speaks to the divide between maybe the top eight nine ten a rapidly shrinking percentage of population who's like hey i make 120k a year working in midtown manhattan for like this tech startup and everyone else who's living paycheck to paycheck but again right. those people are often living paycheck to paycheck too those so people it, are living paycheck to paycheck in new york yeah no they doubt. Are. and they're but their precariousness is well you know in some ways insulated by just the amount of wealth that they have but yes. there's despite their precariousness they are still being coddled to by the you know again the most prestigious media outlets the one we recognize right. like msnbc cnn you know new york times washington post like they're being coddled in a way that the i would say the direct society but those who don't like you know live in that class who don't right. work in those spaces do not be are not coddled to and so you know yeah stroke their ego a little bit tell them oh you read the new york times aren't you so progressive we endorse two women but that's like that doesn't make any sense like like <laughs> they messed up an endorsement on the conceptual level like, like it's like, it's, it's just like, that, that, like, but like that speaks to what we talked about. Like, no, like that, like that's like it's the true. Con, like you pick somebody and you endorse their, you know, you endorse their politics, you endorse their rhetoric, you endorse whatever you, you know, the good and bad parts of them, whatever you want to, however you want to make that work. But you can't endorse two people with exactly with like distinct the distinct politics. Absolutely, Ben. 
What else? Yeah. So I'd like to take this opportunity to announce my endorsement of uh, Bernie Sanders, certainly, but also, I don't know, uh, Biden, Buttigieg, uh, all the dudes. All, all the men. <laughs> yeah. We endorse if, all the men. <laughs> if if right. Kamala Harris was running, they would have endorsed her, too. Like, they absolutely would have. Absolutely. They would have just done a three for. And it would be like, okay, well, this is meaningless. <laughs> like, this, it's already meaningless. No, it is. It is. And, it, and I mean, it's. Yeah, and I, and I think you're right. For yeah, it's both for Warren people. It's both I would say revealing because let's be real, right? I mean they will, they're never going to endorse Bernie, but this other candidate that is exactly the same, you know, the original kind of bullshit line of the campaign, and then conversely, it's super offensive because yeah, you're basically just saying yeah, all women candidates they're interchangeable. I will, and this is where I will say uh, too. I mean, and purely just on a. Uh, you know, regardless of anybody's politics or policies, I mean, this is actually also, though, where the Tulsi Gabbard thing becomes ridiculous. Like, what? whatever you think of Tulsi Gabbard, I mean, I'm sorry. Th this is a woman of color candidate who is, in fact, literally erased. I mean, we have, I mean, just even the contrast of let's run a whole news cycle over Elizabeth Warren's massively suspect reporting of a private conversation, uh, which there's no rational reason to believe. And right. then, oh, well, Tulsi's denying that she's a Russian asset, but, you know, something a Russian asset would do. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, obviously there's no love lost between me and, you know, that scene, but I'm sorry that it, that is a fucking insane double standard. And, it was an, you know, it was an insane double standard for a while when it was like, well, you know, the, the candidates of color are dropping out. Well, I don't know. I mean, Andrew Yang, who I really don't like, is Asian American man running for president. And Tulsi Gabbard is the first one of the first Hindu Americans in Congress and a woman of color. Like, well, they don't mean those people. Well, that's the point. <laughs> they, don't, they don't mean those people. Exactly. And of course, let alone yeah. Bernie Sanders being Jewish. Obviously, well, we can just keep erasing the fact that his you know, family that died in the fucking Holocaust while, you know, bring on a body language expert to essentially apply that he's a shifty, dirty. They brought on a wizard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like I've practiced wizardry for a long time. And Bernie Sanders is using a thing called J Mac. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, or coincidentally, like they they basically brought on who Marion Williamson. <laughs> they brought on like a Marion Williamson. Hey, don't, don't, don't you dare insult Marion <laughs> Williamson like that. Never. Marion Williamson is backing Bernie. I I you know honestly I would I wouldn't say I warmed up to her, but like she jumped, she got out the race, you know, in time for like you know whoever she supported to jump over to Bernie, she's not going to be like, no, weird she's she's not going to be weird about it. You know, I'm like, down. And, I mean, which is one thing she's she not was. Be and, 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 and she, she was my second choice like, for a long time. And, and, and Tom Steyer would be the second choice if not for just the, I just cannot vote for a billionaire. I'm Tom, sorry. Tom, Tom, it's Tom Steyer. Pure economic identity politics. It's become very clear that Tom Steyer is only in his race to be close to Bernie. Like he's, like, <laughs> he's willing to pay like hundreds of millions of his own dollars just to be like a Bernie's pay pig. Like he wants to be like, he just wants to be his friend. And it's, it's kind of endearing. I mean, there are worse ways to spend all your billionaires. Obviously you should give it all yeah, away. I mean, he but, could be, of course, like changing state yeah. houses he could be fixing like protecting he, voting rights but you know he be could fixing just be like bernie war. just being the best of when he just just came and say hi yeah all right okay great good <laughs> <laughs> bernie just give to the pure cold shoulder but just to speak to like the double standard there i mean like even when all people of color were dropping out you know we got re we lost kamala harris last year and that was funny and we lost it <laughs> And because everyone was like, what happened? I was like, well, no one supported her. Like, that, 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 that was, was, was that she run a horrible campaign and like, people well, talked about her prosecutorial record. It's like, yes. well, and there's this new thing called Google. And so <laughs> once, once people discovered that, it was kind yeah. of, all, you know, it was just a matter of time. And, yeah, but so you, technology will be used for racial, uh, for facial techni technology to terrorize people, but it will also be used to that, show you Kamala Harris's record. That's where Biden has uh, well, it's, an it's edge. Also, it's also like bizarre that people talk talk about this, like, oh, see these people of color dropping out, you know, like Kamala Harris. This should really make us reflect on, you know, societal racism and whatever. Like, you get the impression from hearing this that when Kamala Harris dropped, like, I want to know what Kamala Harris's uh, black approval numbers were when she dropped out. About below 10 percent, maybe like seven yeah. or eight, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and like, across the board. Not, she you was know. a very unpopular candidate. I, I mean, yeah, I, it's like, I thought it's, she was it's like, 
it's like maybe we should all use this as an opportunity to reflect on the fact that Kamala Harris sucks at running for president. Well, yeah, surprisingly so, actually. I thought she'd do better. I, I, I think we all thought yeah. she would do better. But yeah. I, from that, but like people were complaining about it. But from like, but the people complaining about Kamala Harris dropping out or, you know, uh, Cory Booker or Julian Castro. But it's not, yeah, sorry. Like, finish no, your no, point. I was going to say, like, those people aren't actually in favor of, like, cultivating any kind of societal, like, any kind of societal structures or, like, you know, D, like, you know, opening up the debates and opening up the, like, oh, the criteria for becoming president outside of Ivy League and right. Rhodes Scholar. Like, they still want to use those traditional, like, arcane metrics of, like, intelligence and competency. And then they want to complain and then they want to resist any move to like, okay, well, we want to like in some ways redistribute wealth to the people of color, to uh, immigrant families in a way that like might allow them to thrive at a level that would get them into politics and, you know, have them be able to develop generational wealth and blah, blah, blah. So we might see better representation. But the people in the race themselves, they're not particularly good examples of like what it means to overcome anything right like the no. lack of people of color in the lack of people of color of women in the race is a sign of societal <laughs> racism and right. but the people the specific people there have often got there by perpetuating the same structures that keep other people out yeah right exactly and then, and that that's the main point and then the other point that was also just embarrassing with each of those like oh i can't believe harris is dropping out i can't believe castro is dropping out was like just the relentless disingenuity because it was just like so many of those like silly like posturing posts it was just like you don't support these candidates anyway right <laughs> like, like that was just like another thing that was so embarrassing it was just like but okay, somebody I mean, else if, should be if so this was your main race. concern then you should have worked to elect this person president but, you fucking idiot but like, that was their way of being of yeah. complaining that their race was less diverse than the republican primary at the same time like if it's e like without all of the people of color in there, like how are they going to signal to the rest of the world that they're better morally right. and intellectually in the Republican Party? And so that like right. that's like that's really that's what they're complaining about. Like if if all you really have in the race, or rather all you have to you know explain why Democratic Party is better or smarter or whatever than Republicans is like, hey, look how diverse you know we listen to women of color, we listen to women, we listen to people of color, like and like they're represented on this debate stage at the highest level of politics. It's like without that, like what are you really offering? Right. And so. Like it's it's a it's a it's um a selfish and kind of narcissistic complaint about like well look how bad it makes us look to the rest of the world that our party like the left party does not have any people of color and it's like it's like well you're not really in favor of doing what it takes to make that a possibility so like you're just complaining about like you know the optics of it absolutely well that's what it all is Ben uh, Burgess as always great pleasure I'm very stoked guys we're gonna have a great live show. Absolutely. Check out Ben's awesome Patreon page. Order his book. Give them an argument, Logic for the Left. Ben Burgess, thanks so much, man. Go get some rest. Don't order Thank Mein Kampf, yes, though. Don't yeah. order Mein Kampf, though. They can probably get cheap. I mean, Frankly, the yeah, three I'll, of us have all written books. They're both books, but, you know, one of them's really bad. I have not written a book. That's that's a little bit Nazi. That's a little bit... Uh... It's a little bit Nazi-esque for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't even you don't want to swim in those waters. All right, I don't even read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean Nazis read. Nazis did read. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com/slash/tmbs. Thanks everybody.